Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on this chat on getting started with payments in Vue 3, a developer walkthrough. Great to have you, Charles. Just wanted to jump in because I noticed your comments from before and we cannot see your video. Do you want to continue without or should we try to get it fixed? Um, we can try to get it fixed. Uh, that said, I, I don't I think it might be an issue with StreamYard. It's just not picking up my camera. Other applications okay. are. but. Okay, got it, got it. You don't have your screen, your camera shared in any other application, right? Just to cover no, it. No, just okay. this one. The stage is yours. Take, All it, right, take awesome. it away. Awesome. So developers, I am super excited to be talking to you about getting started with payments in Vue 3. So a little bit about me, since you can't see me, this is what I look like. I'm a developer based in Seattle. I'm originally from Detroit, and I work at Stripe as a developer advocate. Now, if you haven't heard about Stripe, Stripe is a tech company that's building payments infrastructure for the internet. It's available in 46 countries. You can accept payments in 195. And since 2020, 2 million businesses have launched on Stripe. So let's say that your business is accepting payments online. You want to launch. One of the choices you'll have to make is how you're going to do payments, because broadly speaking, there are two types of solutions. The first solution is to build your own checkout using a drop in UI component like you see on the right hand side with that payment element. The other option is to use a hosted payment service like Stripe Checkout. Now, when you're first getting started and you're trying to launch, oftentimes the hosted payment page is the way to go. And the reason is that it has a lot of benefits. For one, it's low effort. So as you're going to see today, it takes a minimal amount of code to get started with something that is that can grow with your business. It's low maintenance. So once you set it up, you don't have to worry about really maintaining it unless you want to add additional features. It's customizable so that you can have branding and brand colors. And it's optimized out of the box. So payment companies see millions of transactions and they have an idea of what the best practices are to increase conversion rate. But how does it work, right? So here's the checkout flow. Essentially, a customer is going to go to your website and when they're ready to check out, on your client, which is going to be a Vue 3 application, of course. Uh, when they click a button, you'll send a request to your server. Your server is going to grab all the items that the customer has in their cart, probably saved in a database of some sort, and then make an API request to Stripe. Stripe's going to quickly spin up a short-lived payment page, pass you a huge response object, but it's going to include one key that's particularly important, the URL. You're going to forward that URL to your client, redirect the user to Stripe's hosted payment page. And then once the customer completes or cancels their payment, they'll be redirected back to your site. So now that we know what we're building, now that we know how it works, let's build it. So what I have for you today is a Vue 3 application and it has two pages. The first page is this checkout page, which you see here. And the second page is just a thank you page. And what we're going to be doing today is just building out a, a Stripe integration that allows our users to complete their payment when they click this pay button. So I have some code for you here today. And here's our basic project structure. We have a client folder, which is our Vue 3 application running on V, of course. And then we have this server uh, folder here where we have server.js. And that is uh, running with Express. So let's just quickly hop into this um, server.js file and take a look. So we have a um, fairly straightforward Express application. So we're requiring it. Um, we're instantiating it. We're going to be using the Stripe node library, and we're going to need to use a Stripe secret key. And in order to ensure that we're not pasting our secret keys into our code and you know exposing them to GitHub, um, we're going to put it in a .env file. Now, one thing you may wonder is like, where do I get this secret key? Well, if you go to Stripe uh, in the Stripe dashboard, and you can register for free, no bank account, no credit card required, dashboard.stripe stripe.com simple and easy you go to developers api keys and you can grab your secret key there's also this publishable key for when you're interacting with stripe's client side sdks but we won't be doing that today so this is where your secret key is and any any um e-commerce applications going to need uh you know product data 
And in our case, we are just gonna hard code it, but just know that this would generally come from a database of some sort. You have all the fields you would expect in this array of objects, one object per item in our cart, um, an ID, an image, a title, but there's one that might be unfamiliar, and this is the Stripe price ID. Now, when you are using uh, Stripe's hosted checkout option, you have the ability to save your product data inside of Stripe, uh, and that's what this price ID is. And so you can also do this in the dashboard, but there are also APIs. So you see here, I have a Stripe product for each of the different items that I have on my site. So these are the same thing. So that's our shopping cart. Now we're gonna have two routes. Uh, the first one is just to get our shopping cart data so that we can populate our site. And then the next one is going to be the, the, the bulk of what we need to do here, which is a resource for making API calls to Stripe. So let's take a look at this together. We'll start here um, with, this, uh, with this API call. And you'll notice that the Stripe node SDK is you know, kind of namespaced. So you have Stripe, check out the name of the product, session the name of the API, and then create the name of the, the action. And you pass in an object with the different parameters that you need to configure your page. So in our case, uh, you need to pass in the mode, which is the payment scenario. So you can have single payment uh, would be payment, uh, recurring payment would be subscription. And then if you wanna set up a card or another payment me method for later, it would be set up. There's also line items, and that's just uh, an array of objects that represent what the customer is checking out with. So in our case, we are just mapping over our user shopping cart, grabbing the Stripe price ID, which is all of our product information, and then just grabbing the quantity, which is the quantity of the particular item in the cart. And then finally, you need to redirect the user once they complete or cancel their payment. And that's the success or cancel URL. You will always have these uh, particular uh, keys when you're configuring Stripe Checkout. So we can actually see if this works. And in general, I like to test my endpoints before I um, add them uh, to my front end. So in our case, we're expecting that if we make a call to this backend resource, we will get an object with a single key with a session URL. And you can kind of see it here, I tested it a moment ago. But let's go ahead and do a curl to uh, our backend, which is just 4242. And here it is. Here's our short lived link. We click it. There's our checkout session. So all we need to do is create um, like an event listener for a, a button click so that we can forward users to this endpoint. But one thing you might wanna do is add in additional features and functionality. So maybe you wanna collect taxes. You could collect taxes using automatic tax. Perhaps you wanna you know, collect shipping addresses. You could do that as well. And if we make another curl request, now we have uh, shipping addresses. Now we also have uh, taxes. So it's really configurable um, and easy to set up from this point. So we know this works and this is great. We have what we need. So we'll just move on to our client. So how does the client work? Now, if we go to our client, we hop into our view, two views, as I said, and now we have our checkout. So our template's straightforward. We have a checkout summary. It takes in one property, which is an array of objects. In our case, that's our cart. That's how we're building all of the things we see here. And then we have another uh, component here for our checkout button. It takes in two properties, is loading, so we can disable the button uh, based on whether or not it's been clicked and have a nice loading animation and a click handler to redirect to Stripe. So that should be straightforward, even if you've like looked at, uh, say, view, view two, but something that might be a little different, uh, something that was different for me, certainly, uh, when I transitioned to view three, was just this ref um, thing here. Now, ref is how reactivity is handled um, when you're using the composition API in view three. So in our case, uh, we have two things that need to be reactive, two things that we have in our template, so we're gonna wrap them in ref. Um, so first is loading. We're going to initialize it as false because we're not loading to start. And then the cart, we're going to just set that to be an empty array, uh, an empty array. 
And when uh, before our cart is mounted, we're just going to make an API call to our backend to uh, essentially populate it. And we're going to set the cart dot value to the response of the cart, which is going to be an array of objects. Next, we're also going to create a function so that we can redirect to Stripe. So when someone clicks the button, because this is on that at click that you saw above, uh, is loading will be true. This will disable the button and add an animation. And then we'll just make a, a, a fetch to our create checkout resource and we'll grab the URL and then set the window location to that URL, thus uh, completing the redirect. So let's see how this works. So if we click continue to stripe, we have our form and we can just start typing stuff in. So I'll put in my name and this is just in test mode or whatever. Okay, so this is this is my name. It's supposed to be an email. So you'll see that you get the benefit of not having to worry about um, things like validation. I can put in my uh, something for my address. Let's see here. Okay, so it's not doing that, one, two, three. This actually uses, uh, oh, this should be my name, Hawkins, and then I'll put in my anything here for an address, and we'll say Seattle, 98112. I couldn't calculate the taxes. I'll put something in for the card. To attempt to click pay, and this should redirect me to my site. And that's all you need uh, to get set to get started with payments in view. Now, I just showed uh, some of the basic functionality, but there's a lot of things you can do. You could add store policies, you could add coupons, you could add a field for a phone number. There's a variety of things that you could add to this and it would be as simple as adding additional keys. Now, that's how you get started with uh, View 3. One thing with just like the vanilla Stripe integration, one thing that I want to bring up is that we there actually is an awesome project called View Stripe out there that makes integrating Stripe even easier. Uh, it, it's created and maintained by Joff Tukoes based out of Manila, and it's as simple as doing Yarn Add or NPM Install, uh, using one of the drop-in components and passing in the right props. Uh, Joff is actively looking for contributors to this project. Like a lot of projects, it's in the stages of migra migrating from view two to view three. So if you're interested in view, um, in the view open source, um, in view open source in general, definitely get connected and consider contributing to this project. It is a verified partner. So developer resources, um, let's say you want to build this and you, you want more resources other than what you've seen here. There are a variety of resources, first and foremost being the docs. So you see uh, integration builder here that walks you through all of the steps from front end to back end. There's also the Stripe CLI, which allows you to test different things. One of those things is webhooks. So at some point, you'll want to do automated fulfillment. Webhooks is how you do it. It allows you to essentially expose uh, a public endpoint to Stripe. Stripe will send you a payload to let you know if a payment has gone through or something like that. And you can use Stripe, uh, you can use the Stripe CLI to kind of test and forward those webhooks to your local uh, dev server. We also have a, a Postman collection library. So if you'd like to test your API calls using the Postman API client, you can test all of the different APIs that exist. Uh, on Stripe using this workspace and collection. There's also finally the uh, VS Code extension and the VS Code extension allows you to quickly and easily uh, write code related to Stripe. As you can see here, it has uh, auto completion. It's a really awesome tool. And then finally, there is the Stripe developers YouTube channel. And here you can see myself and other developer advocates at Stripe um, building out applications, using the different developer tools. Uh, it's a great resource if you want to get started and you like to learn by uh, watching videos, which a lot of us do. And if you're interested in the code or the slides of this presentation, check out my link tree. Uh, it's just link tree, uh, Charles W. Dev. 
Thank you so much for your time and attention. Uh, go sign up for Stripe. Check this stuff out. Uh, check out our YouTube channel. If you have any questions uh, or you want to talk view, you want to talk Stripe, you want to talk Seattle or even Detroit, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. I'm Charles W underscore dev. Thank you so much for your time and attention.